These are scenes from Brett Seifert's compelling short film Yes Man. It follows London b-boy Purvis to the pioneering centre Les Affons de Dieu in Rwanda, where he spends 10 days teaching displaced children how to break dance. The film documents a project conceived by arts producer Nicola Triscott. Following a visit to see Rafiki Kalikste, who runs the centre, she set up an initiative called Catalyst Rwanda to organise arts activities for Rwanda's young people. When I was in Rwanda, I found people there that I spoke to more articulate about what could do to rebuild a society and what it could do for young people than I've come across anywhere else. And I've worked in a lot of different places. But Rwandans really understand how important self-expression can be and how important it is too to, to rebuild their cultural heritage, which was decimated by colonialism and then practically destroyed in the genocide. And they really understand that art and culture is part of bringing people together, which is incredibly needed in Rwanda. Once Rafiki and Nicola discovered the boys at the centre all wanted to learn breakdancing, one of London's old school b-boys was enlisted to help them. My whole focus was, you know, to be there and, and really try to see these kids, find these kids, see what, how they're living, what they're doing, and really, you know, try to get involved. When they're there, knowing or hearing about what they've been through, and they still stand there laughing with you, you know, you know, having fun with you, interested in you, showing you love. It, it teaches you so much, and, and you learn so much from them. Rafiki participated in a talk about Catalyst Rwanda at London arts venue, the Southbank Centre. He talked about how Los Afon de Dieu transforms the lives of the 130 boys it houses. It's a rehabilitation centre. So this rehabilitation is done through three um, main, main phases. The first phase is uh, uh, recruitment. We go on the street to recruit them. And this recruitment is done by children who are living into the project, in, into the center, and who have uh, reached the level, uh, a good level of rehabilitation. So after that uh, uh, phase of rehabilitation, we proceed on socioeconomic reintegration, taking the child back to the community. Uh, and this means we have to, prep, to make sure that the child is willing to go back to the, to the community, and also the community, I mean uh, relatives, they are also willing to take him back. When I was dancing with the with the Proves, I was I was I wasn't thinking about so much about um, my past. Willie Motabazi is one of the boys from the centre. He lost his father and twin brother during the genocide and found himself on the streets by the time he was eight years old. My mama was in hospital for a long time, and I was eight years I, I the eight years old child was was is not allowed to, you're not allowed to stay in a hospital so. I got some my uncle, my aunt, they didn't want to stay with me, they just kicked me out and I went on the street. Um, I was crying in the middle of the street in Kigari, in the town, and two children come up to me, ask me why I'm crying, and say I have nowhere to go. For the first night they take me in the street and under the bridge. So that's where how I found myself in the street. Willie, now 18, has excelled in his education and plays a key role at the center. I think I will, if I didn't find that center, I could be maybe in the street being bad or maybe get another chance of life. But because I was in a bad life, I was in the street, I think I could be staying in the street maybe. Yeah, never know. Rafiki thinks that the dance project has been inspiring for all the boys. It was my first time to see something new in the project on which everybody is interested. Everybody. I mean everybody. And this hip hop is really helping us, uh, for, especially for youth, to get out of themselves, to express themselves. When they are smiling, uh, showing to the others what they can, it's also something very positive to them.